and welcome to Let's Talk About Book, where we talk about book. And we're now moved on to The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. Yeah. I'm Smeefka. And I'm Strawberry. And I really want to call it The Well of Ascension every time. <laughs> so far, every time I go to say Hero of Ages and my brain's like, yeah. Well of Ascension, Well of Ascension, Well of Ascension. But that's not it. Nope. We, uh, we finished that one. We did. And now we've started this one. Yeah. Which has been crazy. Yep. Uh, I have read through all of part one. Yeah. We'll see if that ends up being the episode. Yeah. Because it's a lot. Yeah, it's, it's thir- a lot. It's 13 chapters. Yep, and it's a lot to talk about. And even even in just, like, the ep- epigraphs for mm-hmm. this, there's, uh, there's a bit to talk about, so. Yep, I, I have, like, a little tiny notebook. Like, it's really, it really is tiny. Um, like, you know, it's, like, the size of my hand. Uh, it's, like, a little bit bigger than the size of, like, a note, like, a, a note card. Yeah, like, if you had, like, a big note card. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit bigger than that. And I have, like, 12 pages. Yeah. <laughs> of, of notes that's you know front being one page back being second page yeah um for for just the chapters and then i have some more notes that i took on my own that i took from the esoterica channel um <laughs> it's funny because the channel is called esoterica but it's like at the esoterica channel got you is there like at uh, dr justin sledge uh i, I took some notes because i have it's it's maybe there's there's some sort of connection yeah, yeah, yeah. between some of the stuff he was talking about with like you know religious spiritual yeah. stuff and like if there's any sort of connection because it's like uh kabbalistic spiritual stuff yeah uh so we'll see we'll see but uh but yeah um but now we're gonna get started with the epigraphs i yes. think um, because this is the first time that we have, we have a prologue actually that has no epigraph. Right. And then with the first chapter, we get the yeah. first epigraph. Do we want to talk about the prologue first? Uh, no, nah, we always start with the epigraphs. We okay. can still just start with the epigraphs. Okay. So the first one, I am, unfortunately, the hero of ages. Mm-hmm. Which I am, I'm assuming that this is Vin. I've been assuming this is Vin, but there's like, may- maybe this could actually be someone else, but it, it, this feels like it's probably Vin. Got you. Holding the power did strange things to my mind. In mere moments, I became familiar with the power itself, its history, and the ways it might be used. Yet this knowledge was different from experience or the the ability to use that power. For instance, I knew how to move a planet in the sky, but but I didn't know where to place it so that it wouldn't be too close or too far from the sun. Yep, which, as we go on with these epigraphs, we'll see is, is certainly relevant, but it's interesting. It's like... You get this understanding of the power, but it's like, what what are the consequences of using this power going to be? You don't yep. know. It doesn't yeah, make yeah, you. Yeah. It doesn't make you omniscient. You just get like full understanding of this power, which is yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she goes on to talk about like all the stuff that Rashik did with it. Yeah. So she like learns what he did with it by yeah. In some ways, having such power was too overwhelming. I think. This was a power that would take millennia to understand. Remain, remaking the world would have been easy had one been familiar with the power. Yet, I realized the jan- danger inherent in my ignorance. Like a child suddenly given awesome strength, I could have pushed too hard and left the world broken. And left the world a broken toy I could never repair. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's very interesting. It's like you suddenly become not exactly omnipotent, I don't yeah. think, but like you know, you, you gain all this power, and it's like, how do you use it properly? Yeah, which is a big theme of this series. Yeah, the, the the series seems to be a lot about like power. What do you do with it? What's the proper? How does one properly wield power? Yeah. Right, like what? What is the proper use of power? The last one's all about like being a king, yeah. And like Ellen kind of has to learn how to be a king, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like it's not like this whole thing of like it's not about necessarily giving up the power. It's about knowing how to use the power correctly, yeah. Which is interesting, yeah. you know. It's not about like abdicating responsibility to someone else, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, you know, it's like but being responsible yourself, yes. You know that that sort of feels like the the the, the kind of takeaway at the end of it, yeah. you know, because everyone's just trying to like hand the kingdom off to someone else. Yeah. Right? Yeah, give it to yeah, yeah. Set. Give it to 
um, what's his name? Uh, Sestraff. Yes. Give it to Lord Penrod or whatever, who then just turns, turns around and gives, the <laughs> you know, it's like, no, someone's got to yeah. actually take care of things. And of course, you know, it, it, it gets complicated by the fact that it's like, is a kingdom really the best way? Yeah, it's yeah, having yeah. one king who's like, I know exactly what to do. It's like, yeah. we know as readers and as, you know, readers and authors, it's like, Elland is a good guy, yeah. and we trust yeah, Elland, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's still like, no one man should have all that power, yeah. as it were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And so it's like, you know, having the council or whatever, it's like, well, they should all be, you know, sort of working together, you know, but, you know, it's like, we're... The, the the sort of the theme of it is yeah. like power and responsibility and like Alan has this responsibility to do the best that he can for the people yeah and, and so it's like no I gotta act like a king and do the right things and whatnot so it's like yeah, there's some stuff to talk about like the sort of political structure of it all but yeah, like thematically yeah. I feel like the point of it is to try and say like you have a responsibility and yeah. you can't just like try and pass that off to someone else you gotta like do the best that you can with it uh but yeah. Um, the one before chapter four. This is actually what happened to Rashik, I believe. He pushed too hard. He tried to burn away the mists by moving the planet closer to the sun, but he moved it too far, making the world far too hot for the people who inhabited it. The ash mounts were his solution to this. He had learned that shoving the planet around required too much precision, so instead he caused the mountains to erupt, spewing ash and smoke into the air. The particles in the atmosphere reflected sunlight and made the world cooler and turned the sun red. Yep. Which, there's an interesting little thing, um, listening to the audiobook versus reading this book, like the physical copy, which we've run into this before, different sort of like editions with like slightly different stuff. And I don't know how much of this is like that and how much of this is just sort of like, you know, there's a lot of words to read and every now and then something yeah, just gets yeah. like a little different. But that epigraph is very slightly different um, okay. in the audiobook versus how it's written because it's like, uh, da, 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 da. It, it's essentially just like it says, um, it doesn't say the thing about particles. It's like, uh, it's not particles in the atmosphere, it just says a thicker atmosphere and cooled the planet. Got you. Yeah, it doesn't say, like, particles reflecting the sunlight. It doesn't have that little bit in there. Um, and so it's just, like, ever so slightly different. And also, because I was, like, looking at the text and listening to it at the same time at one point, there's just other, like, little tiny little, changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, at one point in the text, it just says he. And it's very clear from context that, that they mean Ellen. Yeah. Like, it's not, like, ambiguous at all. But in the audiobook he says ellen instead of he in that moment and like at one point he says like again when in the book it said once more yeah so you yeah, know just, yeah. like, just like little uh... little tiny little changes yeah. but you know especially given the fact that like part of the like plot of these books is that there's like a entity that yeah. slightly <laughs> changes printed words yeah. it's like just kind of funny kind of funny yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> That is, uh... <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, the, the next epigraph. Yeah. Each time Rashik tried to fix... <laughs> Each time Rashik tried to fix things, he made them worse. He had to change the world's plants to make them able to survive in the newly harsh environment. Yet that change left the plants less nutrition to humankind. Indeed, the falling ash would make men sick, causing them to cough like those who spent too long mining beneath the earth. So Rashik changed humankind as well, altering them so they could survive. Right. And and so this and the last one brings up some like interesting questions to me. One, it's like, so he couldn't just destroy the mist. He couldn't just with the power be like, I'm going to make the mist no longer exist. He's like, I'm going it to seems like, yeah. I'm going to solve the mist problem by moving by, yeah, yeah, yeah. the planet closer to the sun to burn away the mist. Yeah. But what is within his purview is like but we do still see the mists around, too. Like, he moved mm -hmm. the planet closer, but right. the mists are still... No, no, I know. What, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like that, that, I, I'm just saying, like, he didn't just go, and they're yes. gone. Yeah. He has to do something, something. else. Yes. But he can just change humanity yeah, 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 to yeah. make them be able to adapt and survive to this new environment. Yeah. Like, he can just be like... And now humanity can survive this. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. not explained, like, how he goes about doing that, you know? Yeah. And, like, making the ash mounts and stuff. Like, what is the power 
let you do yeah. kind of specifically that, that like well, it lets you move the planet around and lets you like do these planetary things like moving it causing you know mountains to rise and fall and making volcanoes and stuff so there's like a terraforming aspect yeah. but then also i can change the plants to make them be able to survive yeah and i can change the humans to make them be able to survive how what's yeah. what's that about you know and like if you can do that why can't you just like be like and now humans can survive the mist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right? Yeah, yeah. Like in a sort of a different way. It's like what's what's the limitations and restraints on this power? Yeah. And like, yeah. It's also interesting cuz it's like we're now getting like cuz like in this sort of fantasy space, like I know yeah. that like Cosmere gets like sci-fi and is like multiple planets and stuff like I know that going in. Yeah. But it is interesting going from like this fantasy thing to yeah, being yeah, like yeah, yeah. the planets the planet. <laughs> and like the atmosphere <laughs> yeah, and yeah, like yeah. you know we made volcanoes so that, you know, there was, like, dust in the atmosphere, which reflects the sun, which is very, like... Because that was, like, a thing that happened. There was, like, the year without a summer. Yeah. Where there was, like, a bunch of yeah, volcanic yeah, yeah. activity that caused dust in the atmosphere. And so, like, everything was, like... So the, like, summer was, like, unnaturally cool because there was so much, like, dust in the atmosphere. Yeah. Um, I forget when it was that that happened. I, I remember learning it, about that. Yeah, because it's, like, relatively recently on, like, the grand scale yeah. of things. Yeah, but, yeah, like, yeah. I don't remember how exactly. But I'm like, yeah, no, that's, like, a real thing, you yeah. know, roughly. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, also yeah. one of the proposed solutions to climate change. Not one of the good ones. <laughs> but but there is a proposed solution to climate change with, like, what if we just, like, put a bunch of stuff in the atmosphere <laughs> to, like... You know, sort so, sort of like when the volcanoes go off, and it's like, yeah, but you got to be real precise with that. Yep. So that you don't cool it too much, and also that you don't just yeah, let's just release more stuff into the atmosphere. Right. Right. That's that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> we um, can just breathe whatever. Yeah, you know, it's like we'd have to find something that could be up there yep. and be fine, and that also that would work and also not kill us. Yes. <laughs> you know, so so it's just kind of like a a funny little thing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's it's interesting. Like, what is this power exactly? Yeah. Rashik soon found a balance in the changes he made to the world, which was fortunate, for his power burned away quickly. Uh, though the power he held seemed immense to him, it was, in truth, a tiny fraction of something much greater. Mm -hmm. Of course, he did end up naming himself the Sliver of Infinity in his religion. Perhaps he understood more than I give him credit for. In any case, we had him to thank for a world without flowers where plants grew brown rather than green, where people could survive in an environment where ash fell from the sky on a regular basis. Yeah, and so it's interesting getting some of the, like, stuff about that. And also the whole sliver of infinity thing, this is just a, a piece of power, like a greater thing. That's where I start getting into my whole, my notes about Kabbalah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, the Safer Zohar and all that kind of shit. But that, that I'll save that for, for later. That'll be my little... Uh, Smivka's theory Cosmere corner love it, love at the it. end, I'm I think. I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, the next one. I speak of us as we, the group, those of us who were trying to discover and defeat ruin. Perhaps my thoughts are now tainted, but I like to look back and see the sum of what we were doing as a single united assault, though we were all involved in different processes and plans. We were one. That didn't stop the world from ending. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, Vin's writing this, but like, from when, maybe? Like, oh, we were trying to like... But also, she didn't know that it was Ruin at that point. I don't know. Yeah. And also, it's Ruin with a capital R. Yep. Because, you know. Mm. <laughs> uh, it is too easy for people to characterize Ruin as simply a force of destruction, Think, rather, of ruin as an intelligent decay. Not merely chaos, but a force that sought in a rational and dangerous way to break everything down to its most basic forms. Ruin could plan and carefully plot, knowing if he built one thing up, he could use it to knock down two others. The nature of the world is such that when we create something, we often destroy something else in the process. Yeah, that's a really interesting one because we yeah. we're talking about ruin in very like sort of concrete terms. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like we're just straight up talking, talking about, about it yeah. and like what the nature of it is, yeah, which is yeah. super interesting. And the whole ruin versus creation aspect of it is also yeah, yeah. and the nature of, of mm -hmm. ruin yeah. and such. Yep. So on to the next one. Yeah. 
All right, we have now had a little break and eaten food since our food arrived. Yeah. And now it is finally time to start yeah. with the prologue. <laughs> the prologue. Yeah. Which is like. Yeah. Mar struggled to kill himself. Yeah, that's the first line of the book. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, what? What a way to open. <laughs> Like, Jesus, come yeah. on. <laughs> like, it, it just starts off immediately uh, like that. Um, I have three years in Inquisitor. Uh, yep. Yeah, so my notes are three years in Inquisitor. It takes control. Sees metal and blood. Uh, seem to enjoy the cruelty. Marsh regains control. The thing freed does control them. So, like, the thing free yes. from the well is what's yeah, controlling yeah. them. It is not complete. Um, he, he's thinking that it is not complete. Yeah. Ruin is its name. Hemalurgy. Spike goes through the person into the Inquisitor below. So, those are all of my notes uh, for the prologue. So, like, we're with Marsh. <laughs> yeah. And he's with a bunch of inqu- Inquisitors. And he's just, like, struggling internally. Yeah. He wants to pull the spike from his back that'll just, like, kill him, um, like he did to the other Inquisitors back in the day. Um, but he can't, because anytime he tries to do it, Ruin takes over and starts controlling him. Yeah. Seemingly, much like how, you know, Mistborn can control, can take direct control of, like, Chandra and Coloss. Ruin can take direct control of these people, of Inquisitors. And it's called Ruin, yes. with a capital R, it and it's what called was... called itself Ruin. Yep, and it was freed from the Well of Ascension, or whatever. See, that's the thing, was it trapped in the Well of Ascension? Or is it like, once you get the power from the Well of Ascension, Ruin, who's just like, in the Earth itself, can like, be like, yes, do it. Like, is it in the Well, or is it like, you know... It's not super important, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think, probably. Um, God. So this is just randomly, I'm like, I need to finish Wheel of Time. <laughs> <laughs> because I think about, like, the boar and, like, the seals on the dark ones. Yes, yes. Whatever, and I'm like, are those physically somewhere? Yeah. Is this more of a metaphysical thing? <laughs> <laughs> How does any of this work? Um, but yeah, um, and whenever it takes control of Marsh... Marsh, like, the world kind of changes in a way. It's yes. like, all the cruelty and the blood and all this becomes, yeah. like, good to him. Yeah. It's like, oh, I love it. It's great. Um, and they have, like, a big old slab. Or, like, two slabs, kind of. And there's, like, Terrasmen on top. Yeah. Soon to be Inquisitor below. Yes. And then they drive spikes through the person on top down into the person below. Yep. And that's how the hemallergy happens. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Whatever that means. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> whatever that means. Heme allergy has to do with blood, but yeah, yeah. But it, how how it all kind of works isn't really gone into in depth in the way that we've had explanations for. for yeah, um, Alamancy and Ferrochemy. I am struggling with these names. <laughs> just like Alamancy, Ferrochemy, Heme allergy. Yep. And like every time, my brain just like halts for a second. Like, uh. <laughs> So, yeah, because I'm like, wait, I need to get, like, the right one. Yep. Um, and it is not complete. Yes. Ruin is not complete. It's trying to sort of complete itself somehow. Yeah. Uh, it was not yet complete. It needed more. Something else. Something hidden. Marsh would find that somewhere. Uh, Marsh would find that something and bring it to his master. And I, and I have perhaps thoughts about what that could be. Mm-hmm. It's unclear. But, like... I don't know. Uh, again, as we go on, we'll remember. No, as we go on, uh, we'll sort of. I'll sort of get more into that and like sort of my thoughts on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing was, uh, it was free. Marsh could still feel it exalting in that, but something kept it from affecting the world too much by itself. An mm-hmm. opposition, a force that lay over the land like a shield. It right. was not yet complete. It needed more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so I don't know. I don't know what that is exactly. Yeah. And you talked about, uh, like, it being, like, a terraceman that mm-hmm. is being... Yeah, being uh, spiked through. Yeah. It seems like it's, like, one of the, the keepers, like, mm-hmm. you, uh, how, like, in 
yeah. uh, Well of Ascension, like, they got attacked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, The Keepers or whatever. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay, because it's like the Keepers got attacked, they yeah. wiped out the Synod and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, because that, and that's something then, like, a later chapter, whenever he sort of brings up hemalurgy again yeah. and them doing this stuff he just sort of again it's just sort of like referenced offhand that it's like more terrorists yeah, yeah, yeah. Or perhaps more keepers specifically um so i'm just like wondering are like you know is it like are they trying to like steal like trying to like get um ferrochemy yes like get ferrochemy yeah, out yeah, of them yeah. um which maybe i'll get more into that later yeah um yeah yeah, yeah. As like a possibility, because well, it wasn't it was in like the epigraphs. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it later. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so so the, that's all of my sort of stuff for the prologue. It, it was quite it was quite something because like I'm just like okay, I'll just start you know Hero of Ages. Yeah, just just start the, just start the next yeah. book. because it's like you know I'm trying to find like a good audio book, yeah. like a place to get the audio book. And, you know, I found, like, a version that's kind of, like, lower quality, but it's, yeah. like, it's fine. And I'm, like, okay, I'll just, like, put it on. Yeah, this seems fine. You know, it's, like, the hero of ages, whatever. Yeah. And it's, like, Marsh. <laughs> it's, like, Marsh struggled to kill himself. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so it really immediately kind of kind of pulls you in. Yeah. I, I, was, I was having quite the time listening. Yeah. I was, like, listening to the audiobook and stuff. Over like a couple nights, and and so often because like you you'll go to bed and yeah, I'm still yeah. like up for a few hours because my my sleep schedule is bad and I'm just like sitting here listening and then I just like turn over <laughs> to like you know like <laughs> to where you, the bed is where you are yeah, and I'm just yeah. like I can't <laughs> say anything to you because you're asleep I'm just like oh my god <laughs> um and that and that's a, a few times throughout yeah, the. Yeah, yeah. Th- throughout the the chapters that we've read, but yeah. Move on to chapter one. Yes, chapter one, chapter one. Uh, I am unfortunately the hero of ages. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See that one was real short. Yep. But then from then on, yeah, yeah, yeah. from then on, they they get uh, they get a little crazy. They get a little crazy. Uh, oh yeah, Fatron and Druffle or something. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and. The Titan is the the town that they're at, uh, and and they're just like these guys yep. who are just like, yeah, we've built like a wall, yeah, and like we've trained up some people, but like you know, it, we're like farming and we're trying to just like survive. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> do you think the world is ending? <laughs> Once the Colossus get here, that's basically the end of the world yep. for me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think about it too much. Yep. Um. Yeah, trying to keep the sound the the town safe and alive, and then Ellen shows up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And then Ellen shows up and takes control. Yep. <laughs> Essentially, he he just uh, waltzes in. He's like, "This is my place now. We're gonna go attack the Colas, and uh, mm-hmm. it is how it is." Yep. I don't think he does. He say in this chapter that they're gonna go attack the Colas, or is that technically a later chapter? It'd be later. Yeah, because like he shows up and it's like I'm a misborn. Yeah. Um, check me out, I'm a Mistborn, watch me, watch me leap. Yep, yep. <laughs> like, ah, oh, shit, <laughs> he's a Mistborn. Um. And he's wearing his, his white uniform. Yes, yes, yep. yes, yes. There, uh, who are you? My name is Ellen Venture, I'm your emperor. <laughs> I'm your emperor. I feel like, um, I don't know, maybe this is just that, like, I'm not listening to the audiobook at the same speed that I was last time. Cause, yeah. Because on Audible... Uh, you can, like, get more precise with, like, your yeah. playback speed. And so I've been listening to it to, like, just ever so slightly slower um, with where I'm listening to it now. And Ellen's voice, as, like, him doing Ellen's voice, yeah, it sounds yeah. a little different. <laughs> I think I think that's just, he sounds a little different as Ellen in this book. Yeah, because he sounds, like, a little, like, deeper. He sounds a little bit more like Straff, honestly. So I, my... My thing is always in in book three he sounds like Rand because Michael Kramer does yeah uh, 
uh, uh, yeah, the Wheel makes... of Time books. Mm -hmm. And in this book, Ellen is very, or just like the mm -hmm. way he does Ellen's voice is very... Is very Rand. Because Rand, he's... especially Rand as he like gets more confident, more like mm -hmm. Emperor-y. <laughs> yeah, because he is very Rand so far. Because mm -hmm. like now he's a Mistborn and he has like a bunch of power. Yep. And he has way more power because he's like first gen Mistborn. Yep. Because... And he's, he's basically like... I, I can't I can't be taking the slow route anymore. Like mm -hmm. I, I fine. Yeah, the, okay, the, I gotta just the world is ending, so I gotta do it right now. And yeah, which is very just like yeah, it's very kind of anti what he wants. Mm -hmm. And you know yeah, it's like he he's got to do like the Rand thing. Where it's like I gotta unite everyone. Yeah, yeah. I gotta unite everyone right now as quickly <laughs> as possible. Uh, all these wars and shit. Yep. It's un unfortunate. But yeah, Ellen's... Because uh, th those are the only notes that I have for chapter one. Because I think I sort of, like, I listened to it without taking notes and sort of went back and took notes for chapter, like, one, two, and maybe three. Um, but yeah, so it's like Ellen just kind of... The chapter just kind of Ellen showing up and, yep. like, uh, taking control, being like, hey, I'm, uh, I'm your emperor and I'm here to help. <laughs> like you can you can be like no but like the colossus are gonna come and get yeah. you so yeah. like y y you need the help <laughs> i brought some armies and also he's like i'm the help you send for and it's like oh yes i definitely send for help yeah <laughs> yeah yep. it's like what you, <laughs> you sent for this guy <laughs> <coughs> so that's fun the way he's just like ah yes you definitely send you for, for me, me right, right? <laughs> like uh yeah for, for sure <laughs> <laughs> he'll let me pretend that i had sent for him act like this was part of the plan all along i could give up rule here without looking like a failure mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah ellen ellen's trying to like be like listen <laughs> it's like <laughs> i i gotta kind of come in here and take control but i'm gonna try and yeah. make this as smooth as possible Yeah, like i know this like doesn't feel good for you like yeah. <laughs> for someone to just come in and like just take your mm -hmm. your city or whatever but like it's like, but I also, I got, I really got to let you know yep. that, like, things are going to go a lot better if, if, if we I'm... do this right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, because, like, you know, in this world, he has these powers, yep. and so does Vin. Yep. And there's just certain things that they can do that other people can't. Can't, right. You know? Yep. And, and that's one of the sort of things that kind of is, is like a difference that always sort of kind of throws a wrench into a lot of, um, like when you do try and get into some of the sort of like the moral and political, yep. um, questions where it's like, okay, but like legitimately though, in this world, some people are just like, they just have powers that, that let them do things that yeah. other people just can't. Yeah. Like yeah. in, in our world, there's always things that some people can do that you can't because of like some sort of physical thing, yeah. but it's more pronounced when it's literally magic yeah, and yeah, some people yeah, yeah. and genetic and some people can do it and some people can't right and and so it's like yeah no th these people are just more powerful and they have it's easier for them to exert their will on everyone else yep um and hopefully they're doing it for good not for evil yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it's like in our world kings aren't actually you know, divine, like, yeah. you know, these god kings or whatever. But, like, Ellen is the emperor, but he's also, like, a super strong alamancer. Yeah. And, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also that was kind of, like, part of the point of the first book, where it's, like, the Lord Ruler, he just is super strong magically, yeah. and so he's just able to dominate the world through force, and that is seen as bad. Yeah. yeah and so it's, yeah, like, yeah. There, there's, the, you know, these attempts to, like... But it's like the, the, the sort of the morality and the politics are always going to be kind of different from our world, just because they're different worlds. Yeah. And that's just sort of like an interesting sort of thing to try and keep in mind when you're trying to like read fantasy. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And and there's like you know the the temptations of like trying to be like what's it trying to say politically and yeah. trying to sort of like understand that sort of stuff. I don't know. I I just I saw a thumbnail from someone. I didn't even, like, read the video, but they, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, about, like, uh, Hero of Ages, and it was, like, bourgeois, um, Christian fanfic or something like that, and, like, I don't know if that, in, if they're, like, it I is or it isn't. <laughs> they, I think I know that channel. I think they are, mm -hmm. like, a, uh, like, Cosmere mm -hmm. fan. I think it's, like talking about people saying that mm, gotcha 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 um, i haven't seen the video i've seen the thumbnail gotcha yeah because like i've seen I, I saw like the thumbnail and like i saw like a little bit of like 
the very, very beginning when you just like sort of hover your mouse over <clears throat> a thumbnail and it like auto plays a little bit. Yeah. But I'm like, that's interesting. I wonder, I wonder what this person's saying about it. You know, it's like, um, you know, I also think about like how in One Piece there's a lot of like, you know, like the whole, uh, how do you spell? like the government versus like the sort of like local islands having like kings and stuff. Yeah. And just sort of like, what does One Piece have to say about like monarchy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, because it's like it gets like kind of complicated actually when you really get down to it. it's like is is One Piece pro or anti monarchy? Well, actually, as as time goes on, the question is like nuanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I won't get into any into any more specifics, especially because like I was I almost was like I want to talk about like a specific island, but I'm like. I won't get into it because, like, spoilers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you want to talk about it, we can just say what the spoilers are. Yeah, that's true. Um, so I guess, like, spoilers for Alabasta. Gotcha. And also, I'll say, just to, to cover everything, spoilers for, like, way later in the series, too. <laughs> for, like, much later. I can't, I don't know when exactly, but, like, I guess... Spoilers for like during that like the reverie, reverie. flash yeah yeah, yeah yeah reverie like flashback the like whole like for for when the revolutionaries are oh it, egghead so spoilers yeah, yeah. Spoilers, spoilers for, for egghead. egghead right right spoilers for egghead I guess um but don't we get that before egghead I don't know anyway the point is yeah spoilers alabasta as well as I'll, I'll say like egghead maybe like yeah. reverie yeah yeah um because like. In Alabasta, Cobra is the king. Yeah. And he's, like, a good king. Yeah, and We yeah, want yeah. to get back in power because he is good, good. Yeah. And, like, we don't want it to be Crocodile because Crocodile is bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, like, we're trying to save the princess and the yeah. and the king. And, like, it, it's a monarchy, but it's good yeah. and all this stuff. And we of... have, like, sympathy for the the, mm-hmm. the rebels y- or right. whatever. But, like, like the rebels ultimately... Aren't... Yeah, but ultimately we want the monarchy back yes. in charge because they were fine. And the rebels were yeah. being misled by yes. this outside force. Actually, the king was totally fine and the rebels were just misguided. They were they were deceived. Yeah. And they were all deceived by yeah, Crocodile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For in secret, he, he, he forged this identity of Mr. Zero. <laughs> um, but, you know, so it's like, we're, we're, we're sort of on the side of this, like, monarchy because they're, like, good. But then, way later, we, you know, there's, like, I guess this would be, like, reverie because it's, like, we see the empty throne. Yeah. We, we go to the world government, there's reverie is happening, and there's the empty throne where it's, like, a symbolic thing. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. no one person who rules over the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? There's no one person who rules over the world. We all... We have, like, Reverie, and there's, like, the Gorosei, which is, like, six people. Yeah. Um, and then we find out there is someone who's sitting on the empty throne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Im, Imu is ruler over is like at the very top of the world government one person does rule over everything and this is seen as a very bad thing yeah yeah, yeah, so it's like is monarchy good or is monarchy bad and it's like well you can have good kings who are doing good things but the idea of one person ruling over literally everything is seen as kind of inherently bad yeah, yeah, yeah especially because it's like we have this ideal that like the empty throne stays empty so that no one person yep. rules over everything. But then secretly someone is doing it. Like, <laughs> Eam is hidden. Yeah. Is like a secret ruler of the world because if you were doing it, like, openly, that, that'd be seen as, like, obviously bad. Yeah. Right? And also when you get to, like, um, yeah, I'll just stick with these so I don't have to add more spoilers. <laughs> but it's, like, the, the sort of, like, monarchical rule, which, I mean, that's more, like, single-person dictator rule, because yeah, you don't yeah, have any sort of, yeah. like, line of secession, you know? But it's still just, like, this whole, but, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, having this political system where everything is ruled over by one person... One, right. ...is seen as not good. That is yeah, not a good yeah. system. That's not how we should be doing things. Um, having yourself above everyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the thing about... Um, Cobra that makes him a good king is that he does not see himself as, as being above, yeah, as being yeah, above yeah. everyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That being king is, is is a matter of like having a responsibility to the people yes. rather than being above them. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's like you know, because c- like earlier 
we we get even some like because again it just gives more nuance because like the thing about one piece is that you could talk forever because there's yeah. so yeah, many yeah, 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 yeah. islands it's oh like, yeah and there's so many like each island really could be its own like mm-hmm. anime a lot of times like it's like right. it's it's so uh <laughs> and, and part of the reason why it's like especially i'm i'm thinking about like alabasta is because like the live action is going to be coming out like relatively soon yeah. and it's yeah, going to yeah, yeah. be sort of getting into not alabasta yet but the stuff like yeah. leading up to it so i feel sort of like especially concerned about spoilers spoiling. for yeah, yeah, yeah. alabasta oh, specifically specifically yeah. Um, so I will call that end of spoilers yeah, yeah, yeah. for, um, for One Piece. But yeah, w- w- One Piece is crazy because it's like, people are like, oh, it's so long. It's like, yeah, but by being so long, we get to see so many different, like, you know, we see so many different kingdoms yeah. or so many different islands with so many different types of, like, governance yes. and stuff that we get to look at this from a bunch of different angles. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And it's like, and, and I think that's going to be one of the interesting things sort of, like, getting into Cosmere as a big series yeah. is going to be sort of, like, getting a bunch of different angles on things. Like, so many different worlds. Yeah, so many yeah, different yeah. ways that people can be in the world. Yep. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think my original point was something about, like, monarchy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, <laughs> uh, Ellen is, uh, mm-hmm. is being uh, emperor He's being now. emperor right now, and he's like, well, the world's ending. It, it, the world's ending, and it's, it's time to be emperor, I it's guess. It's time to be emperor, I guess. Because it's also, like, you know, in, in order to set up some sort of, like, democratic system, you need to get the people to believe in it and to participate yeah. in it. And you need time, mm-hmm. and you need, like... Right. Stability, mm-hmm. like... <laughs> Right, it's just one of those things where it's like everyone, everyone's already used to something else. Yep. And so people are going to default to what they know, yep. especially under times of crisis. Yeah. Like, like when, when everything is going crazy, you fall back on what's familiar. What's yep. familiar is, is this power structure that we've had for literally a thousand years. Yep, the Lord Ruler. So a powerful Mistborn coming in and... <laughs> and, and being the emperor of everything, it's, it's like, like... Okay. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, sure, that, that makes sense to us. And so it's one of those things where it's like... No, this isn't the best. We can right. do we can do better than this. Yeah. But this is what we have right yep. now. And I love that like Ellen like we get that through a character who we we know like looks down on this type of, right. of rule, which I mm-hmm. just like find interesting. Right. Yeah. Because one of those things where it's like because he's like ac- actively arguing against like mm-hmm. exactly what he's. Mm-hmm. he's doing now like last book was his like kind of right whole his whole deal. his whole thing was mm-hmm. that he did not want to 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 be another like lord ruler yeah. or just like another powerful emperor yeah. lording over everything like this and, and so it's, it's very interesting and it makes me especially kind of like interested in like era two mm-hmm. and stuff like once we get a little bit farther down the line, because, like, you know, <laughs> the fact that there is an era two, yeah, 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 you know, obviously the world doesn't like end in such a way as that we can't have era yeah, two of yeah, Mistborn, yeah. but it's like, you know, once this is over, question mark, <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's era two going to be about? <laughs> you know, it's like, is it going to be over? Or are we just going to kick the can down the road? <laughs> because we got era two of Mistborn yep. and then there's also going to be an era three because there wasn't going to be an era two. Yeah, so he originally like, wanted it to be like a trilogy of trilogies, and then Era Two ended up happening outside of the trilogy of trilogies. I guess. Yeah. From what I from what I've heard. Uh huh. Yeah. What is? Th- and then I think the the timeline has also become condensed. Mm-hmm. Uh, like in his head and stuff. Mm-hmm. Of, of things in general. Right. Yeah. Cause, Cause like there's gonna be more Mistborn stuff. Yeah. Cause it's like, I'm so excited for for a future Mistborn era. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like I'm very curious as to what that's going to be because it's like Mistborn, like the, it, it's so interesting because like you tell me about like these other books, yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff, yeah, little bits and pieces. Uh huh. And so I'm like, and a lot of these are are sort of like here's a self contained story on some planet that yeah. we've never seen before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is very much like. There's so much to explore here. Yes. And it's like, and then also in Stormlight, it's like huge and sprawling. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot to get into. 
But then other ones, it's like, and then here's just a little something yep. here. And then yep. a little, it's just a little, just a little, yeah, a one-off know. here or, or a little bit there, yeah. And, I, and I'm, Novella there. And I'm very curious as to how those are going to be. Yeah. Sort of like in comparison, you know? Because Mistborn, it's like, oh yeah, start with Mistborn. And then I get started with Mistborn, like, and, and this is where you, like, start with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is just like, there's so, like, we can be here forever. forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's... Yep. I mean, it doesn't feel like we could be here forever right now, considering it seems like the world's about to end. <laughs> yeah. But, but knowing that we do have a, like another era, yeah, 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 and that yeah. like yeah, I'm like what's what's yeah. But I mean, you know, we could be here forever, and we are in Cosmere. Yes, right, yeah, yeah, because yeah. like this is just like a part of the larger Cosmere stuff. Yeah, yeah, but each each place can really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's there there's a lot to a lot to see in a lot of places. Yeah, I'm really excited for the Elantra sequel. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, as, especially to have him come back to it after like so long. And right, because like, Elantra was like the first his, Cosmere thing. Right, and just like he's improved so much as a writer in mm-hmm. general. I just really can't wait to see him come back to that world. Right. Yeah, I'm. I'm interested. Not that Elantra is bad. Right. It's right, right. not. Right, but it's but, just like you know, obvious. You know, yeah. He's been doing it for a while, and so he's gonna he's gonna grow and and yeah, all that yeah, sort yeah. of stuff. But I guess we should. Well, yeah, we should probably uh, <laughs> <laughs> get on to chapter two at some yep, point. Yep. Uh, considering we're already like fifty five minutes <laughs> into yeah. recording. Did we have anything else for this? Um, for this chapter. This chapter. I don't think so. They're just kind of given a. A recap on Colos. Yeah, yeah, because like, we are in some of the like recap yeah. chapters, you know, or yeah. like chapters where he feels a need to sort of like, hey, remember what this thing yeah. is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like the, the Colos, are, like in a frenzy, they're not gonna attack each other. They're gonna, you know, like just like mm-hmm. that that type of world stuff, you know. Yeah. But yeah, so we can we can go to chapter two. Chapter two. Uh, I have like three notes. Yeah. For chapter two, but again, that's because I, like, listened to it without taking notes, and then just wrote some notes down. Tensoon chapter. Yeah. Tensoon, <laughs> so my three notes are Tensoon getting tortured. Yeah. Generations of Chandra, judgment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Tensoon's just, like, in a hole. He's yep. just in an oubliette. Um, which is a fancy term. I was, I was like, what? I have never heard that word before. I know it because of Drawfee. <laughs> Got you. I'm like, I, I have a, a, a pretty, a pretty mm-hmm. alright vocabulary, but, uh, yeah. it's one I've not heard of. So, because c- c- Julian Drawfee mentioned Oubliette, and they're like, what's an Oubliette? I was like, it's an Oubliette! <laughs> and it's just like, it's like, you, you just throw them in there and you forget about them. <laughs> it's like, what? Because it comes from a French word. I was gonna say, is it French? Mm-hmm, it comes like a French word for forget or something. It's just like a hole in the ground. Gotcha. Like, like a, a prison cell that's a hole, yeah. that's a pit, that's yep. a hole in the ground yeah, that you keep yeah. someone rather than like, how we traditionally think of stuff, and you, you throw them in there and you yep. forget about <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, and he doesn't have any bones or anything. No. No eyes, no any of that. No bones. So he's he's just he's just a a slime, just he's just a big ooze in a hole. Yep, he's just a hole full of ooze. <laughs> they throw food on him and then they throw water on him. Yep. And it's just it's just an existence of being in a hole. Yep. For he's been there for like about a year. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. He's been in there for about a year, just like contemplating. Yeah, because it's been about a year since the last book. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, basically. Yep. And and he's just like they. What exactly is is it that he's saying? He's like, I I did this shit. I betrayed the Chandra in this way, like, the, the these crimes of, like, telling them yep. about how Mistborn can control us yep. and, you know, all this sort of stuff, you know, breaking contract and all that. And it's like, they, they, they're keeping me alive, but they also want to kill me. Uh, and they, like, pull him out of the hole and they give him a skull. Yep. Uh, to, and he sort of, like, starts forming around the skull, but then they immediately yeah. start pouring acid on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which starts killing him, and so it's like, okay, so what can kill a chondra? Acid. acid. Yeah. I still think that fire is probably a good option, unless they just don't burn for whatever reason. But it seems like, you know, you can't, you know, bludgeoning, piercing, slashing damage, no go. Yeah. But, like, you know, 
something like dissolving them with acid. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, yeah, I feel like yeah. if you burn them up, yeah, that'll probably do it. <laughs> but, but you know, maybe not. Maybe truly acid is their only, their only weakness. But it's like they, they ha- they're required to give me the skull so that I can like speak. Yeah. So I can have like last request or whatever. Yeah. But they're trying to just like go ahead and kill just, me. Yeah, yeah. Before, yeah, because like he he thinks he's like most of them couldn't form like uh-huh. a body that, that as fast as he can. Yep, and uh, quickly like forms around the skull, yeah. forms a, a lung um, and like a tongue. Yeah, to to be able to to say judgment. Yeah. To uh, I, want, I want judgment. Yeah. And they're like, are you sure? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> are you sure? Yep. Yeah. Which, like, the descriptions of, like, Kondra doing yeah. stuff from the Kondra's perspective tend soon talking about just, like, forming a lung and yep. forming around the skull. It's, it's really crazy to read. <laughs> yep. I, I love it. It's super interesting. Uh, as soon as it was, like, we're in Ten Soon's perspective, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, and it, and it was very he, he cool. He works through the pain, forming prim- primitive hearing organs inside the skull cavity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's cool. And, and that's, that's all my, because chapter two is pretty short. Yeah. And so they, at the, at the end of this, it's like, accept death or whatever, because like a, a trial will be public and it'll be shameful, mm-hmm. but. Right, he, right, right. You can just, yeah, like but he wants to go through with the trial. Yep, 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 yep. And uh, it also says uh, somewhere uh, there were some who uh, suffered endless captivity, a torture that would eventually break uh, even the minds of those endowed uh, endowed with the blessing of presence. Right, um, yeah, yeah, the blessing of presence. Yeah. Uh, which I'm so curious to speak about that. Like, because like at first I heard it, and I didn't think anything about it, but but there's like we hear blessing show up a couple more times yeah. later and so I'm, I'm curious about that anything else for chapter two chapter three uh fighting starts yeah i like this ellen venture second emperor of the final empire <laughs> mm-hmm. yep yeah so so they're like we're gonna fight the coloss we just gotta run up and fight him and it's like that seems like a bad idea well we just gotta do it <laughs> um electrum gold compliment and it's a uh, poor man's atm yeah um it just sort of counteracts the effects of atm yeah so if someone else has it it won't work on you because you have electrum which is interesting because it's like i'm guessing like if you were like burning copper that doesn't make atm stuff not show up around you right you know it doesn't like block your your alamancy in that sense because ATM just like lets you see the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then like Electrum prevents that from happening, which is interesting. Yeah. Um. So we so we have like another metal, which is cool. Uh, Inquisitor controlling the Coloss. Yep. It's, and I'm like, because it's like the Coloss are being controlled. Because that was something that that comes up. Where it's like the Coloss are being controlled. And it's like, well, why don't we just control the Coloss? And it's like, well, they're already being controlled yeah. by the Inquisitor, and it's hard to like rip control of the Coloss away from the Inquisitor. Like, if someone's already controlling them... Yeah. It's hard to, like, take control of them. Uh, if they're just, like, doing their own thing, then you can just take control of them, no problem. Um, if you're, you know, misborn. Yeah. Um, wearing... Oh, yeah, so then the Inquisitor, we... So, so we're fighting the Coloss, and we have, like, the people in town yeah. come and attack the Coloss, because if we attack them before they're, like, in, like, their frenzy, yep. that'll, like, throw them off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and... Way better chance. Way better chance. And also, it's, like, the Coloss are very strong, but they're also very, like, predictable. Yeah. And so it's just, like, just run in, attack them as hard as you can, and we need to flush out the Inquisitor. And so, like... Also, like, Vin shows up. Yep. Vin shows up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Ellen's like, there's that second army I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Um, and she starts killing the Coloss, and the Coloss get confused because she's smaller than they are, but she's killing them. Yeah. And so that, and like, scares really, them. it really throws them off. And, and the Inquisitor comes out, and they're fighting the Inquisitor, and it's wearing armor over its back. Yes. To protect the spikes, which yep. is smart. Yep. <laughs> uh... I have Ellen's too strong because he got Alamancy from the source. Yep. 
um, and I have slight wording differences, and they win. Um, so th- that was a very basic rundown of yeah. chapter three, because again, I was doing it sort of after the fact. Yeah. But it, but it mostly is just like a lot of cool, cool fighting and stuff. Cool there, fighting. And there stuff. was a weird one other weird thing about the Inquisitor. He moved faster than yes, than he should be than able he should to. be able to <clears throat> faster than with like Duralumin yeah. or anything like that, which. Terrace men, maybe, maybe they gave him some of that, some of that, uh, fucking ferrochemy. Yeah. And so he's got speed stored up and he went a little bit faster. I don't know. I think that's a a good thought. Yeah. So, so yeah, because Vin's like, what's up with that? And also it's like, Elend is stronger than Vin because he got Alamancy straight from the source, seemingly. He's like super strong, but she's still like kind of better than him because she's got like a sort of like a knack for it and yeah. has been using it for longer uh and you know has specifically trained with it but also just generally has kind of like seemingly an innate talent yeah. for alamancy yeah, yeah, yeah. you know uh she's very talented and very skilled mm-hmm. um and, and practiced right and ellen has more sort of raw power yeah because he is he ate the bead yeah that seemed to really yeah like first gen yep and it seems to have gotten weaker and weaker as, like, the generations go on and yeah. stuff, so. Yep. Is there anything else for Chapter 3? Um. They sort of, like, part of the thing is that they're fighting the Inquisitor, and then, they, and then they're, like, taking Coloss from under its control, and then having the Coloss fight on their side until eventually they have, like, all the Coloss. Yeah. And so it's, like, by the end, they have the Coloss, and, like... Some of the army has died, but it's still way better than if they had just, you know, not been there and let the Coloss attack. So so it all works out in the end. Sorry, I just wanted to... No, you're good. Look over that. So we are good for chapter three? Yeah. Alrighty. Chapter four. Uh, Rashik. Oh, yeah. Rashik moved the planet closer to the sun, and that was too hot, so he used the ash mounts to make it cooler yeah so, so i had some notes about the epigraphs yeah, yeah, yeah. with these because it was like because they were yeah cause, wild because they were wild because the thing is like the epigraphs in the other ones they weren't quite like this yeah you know dropping this kind of like lore more mysterious less lore drops yes <laughs> <laughs> more and, questions less answers <laughs> yes yeah, yeah yeah and these are like Questions and answers yeah. at the same time, in a way that the epigraphs are usually kind of just questions. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Sezed, Chief Ambassador. Yes. Chief Ambassador Sezed. Which uh, he's not super happy about. No. He's, he, he feels that it kind of goes against, like, like the terrorists and stuff, but mm. he's, he's just like, I guess I just am. Yeah, because he's got, like, some complicated feelings about the whole terrorist-serving yep. people thing. Um, which I think I have some notes about in here. Um, yeah, th- this does get kind of brought up in the chapter a little bit later. Um, but right now he's going over his notes on religion. Yes. Uh, his religious notes, talking about death. He's thinking a lot about death and religion and truth and what's real. He's like, was it the, the Lanzai religion or something like that? Uh, in this Kanzai. one, he's, in this one, he's looking at the the Kazi. Mm-hmm. I believe C A Z Z I. Yeah, but he goes over like a couple. Yeah. The Kazi. Yeah, I think later he has one that starts with an L. Mm-hmm. I think I think it is just the I think it's just that in the audiobook he doesn't say Kazi he says Kazai. Oh, gotcha. And so I have it as like Kanzai. Got you. <laughs> in my notes. Um, and he says, logically inconsistent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bree shows up, Breeze is trying to sort of make him feel better, um, but he's searching for, for sort of truth about Tindwal and the religions, like, you know, what happened to her, in yeah. the sense of, like, death and the soul and, and all that kind of stuff, because he's just like, all these religions and they didn't do anything for me, and so now he's going through, like, instead of just, like, he, he's like, are these true or not? Yes, instead of just kind of the the kind of pure faith that he had and the just mm-hmm. a- appreciation and <clears throat> and right. stuff he's now like trying to sort of like judge them yeah yeah sort of like you know be like you know logic logically inconsistent yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. not true <laughs> <laughs> um 
Yeah, trying to overthrow Li Cao by getting him to sign a treaty. Yeah. <laughs> so we're trying to overthrow this, you know, kingdom or whatever. We're trying to conquer this kingdom. Uh, basically trying to get Li Cao to sign a treaty to to partner with, with Ellen. Um, and Breeze is just like, what's taking them so damn long? <laughs> <laughs> um, and and says it has complicated feelings because he's like, you know, the terrorist people were forced to serve. Yeah. This whole thing about, like, you know, we're not going to, like, serve someone else. But also, it's, like, actually, who we were serving was the Lord Ruler, who was also a terrorist yep. man. We, like, you know, it was a terrorist man who did this to his own people. Yep. You know, we were forced to serve someone who was a terrorist man. And this idea, like, oh, we have to, like, you know, not serve any other masters again or whatever. It's, like, obviously, like, serving under a master is not good, per se, but it's also, like... You know, this idea of, like, sort of being too insular, in a sense, yeah. right? It's like, you know, Rashik was, like, a weirdo terrorist supremacist, yeah. and then he ended up fucking subjugating the terrorist people worse than anyone else. Yep. Worse than anyone, you know? Um, <clears throat> and so he's just got, like, these sort of, like, complex feelings that he's sort of stewing on yep. about the nature of the terrorist people and his place in the universe and yep. he doesn't know what to believe in. He's kind of like lost everything. You know, it's like he's lost his faith in all these things. He's like trying yep. to like search through them for some sort of concrete truth and Breeze is just there trying to cheer yeah, him up. Yeah, like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Breeze is just trying to like talk to him and yeah. just trying to like, I don't know, get him out of it almost. Uh, I have, um, Breeze is... Wisdom slash charisma, while Sazed is wisdom slash intelligence. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're both the highest wisdom people <laughs> in the crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But one's whiz int and one's whiz yeah, ka. Yeah, yeah, You know, where it's like Breeze is like wisdom and charisma. It's it's understanding people so that he can do all of his, like, you know, sort of interpersonal yeah. machinations while. Sazed is wisdom in the sense of, like, wisdom and intelligence, like, understanding and learning and trying to, like, you know, more that side of things, while Breeze is, like, wisdom in terms of understanding people. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, Charisma, yeah. you know, do, doing well with people, understanding people, while Sazed's, like, understanding people, but in a bit more of a academic way. Yeah. You know, studying religion and that stuff and understanding people kind of through that but then him sort of kind of realizing the ways in which he doesn't kind of understand right. he's sort of learning how much he doesn't know in, in a sense with all this going on it's like I, I just sort of blindly believed all these religions but then what did they do for me and yep. so now what do i do with them yep. yeah yeah you know yeah. it's like because i because i imagine in the end he's he's going to still find some value in them yeah even if he doesn't sort of have the same faith that he once had yeah is where i'm guessing this is going to end up you know it's like because i know that again we've brought this so many times sanderson is a religious man himself and that he is you know find some sort of you know whatever in that you know it's like he sees it as like a good thing for himself right so it's like i i doubt that says story ends up being like you know because Breeze is like, you know, he's like, I don't think you're cut out to be an atheist yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's like, his story's not going to be, like, finding comfort in being, in believing in nothing, yeah. probably. But it might still be, like, he doesn't believe in them, per se, but he's probably still going to f- have some sort of, like, find value in them somehow. Yeah. You know, it's like, all, all this work that he's put into, like, studying these religions and whatnot will, will, will have been worth it somehow. Yeah, yeah, Even yeah, if yeah. it's not that he believes them in the way that he believed them before, it's still just like, you know, it wasn't pointless or worthless right. in the sense but I, i'm curious to see sort of where he well, yeah, where, where, it goes. where he ends up because it's like in, in in a story like this like i'm very much like yeah no like they're not true yeah and yeah, like yeah, yeah. that doesn't mean they aren't still like interesting and yeah, worth yeah, yeah. sort of like learning about and preserving and understanding but but yeah they aren't true yeah and so i'm like where where's sanderson gonna go with yeah, this yeah, as someone yeah. who is religious <clears throat> yeah um Sazed's lost everything. Sazed and Breeze talk religion, and Sazed uh, pulling Breeze out of his panic attack. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's like, you know, you really helped me back there and all that. You know, you, you've done so much. And, like, just trying to, like, make him feel better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
I never did thank you uh, for pulling me out of myself, forcing me to get up a year ago and keep going. Uh, if you hadn't helped me, I don't know what if I would, ever would have gotten over what happened. Uh, Sazed nodded. On the inside, his thoughts were more bitter. Yes, you saw destruction and death, my friend. But the woman you love is still alive. I could have come back, too, if I hadn't lost her. I could have recovered as you did. Which is like... <laughs> yep, say, that's my last note to say is that it's feeling bitter. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, he, he doesn't say that. He doesn't, no. like, lash out or anything. No. But but it, but there's like a certain like real like even if Seiza knows that that's not probably like right. logically the right thing he's just like it's just how yeah. he's feeling you know it's you know the sort of raw emotional place from from Seiza just yeah. like he's like well you didn't lose like you like you got your you got your your like girl to leave or whatever like I tried yep. to send him to a law if she didn't leave like <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. Yep, and, and it's like yeah. it's like yeah, you like I pulled you out of it, but I'm still in yeah. it, you know. But it's like in a different way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So it's 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 interesting. But yeah, that's that's the last that I have for chapter four. Yep. Chapter five. Um, Lord Ruler changed the planet and the people. Everything he did had an unintended side effect. So it kept just sort of being this chain of like you know, I moved the planet. Yeah. And now uh, it's too hot, and so uh, the ash mounts, and yeah. uh, that's fucking up the plant scene. Well, so we're gonna change those. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like one thing after another after another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, trying to to fix things and just yeah. making them worse. Um, yeah, Electrum makes you immune to ATM. Uh, Inquisitor has extra spike in it. So, so they're like they're going over the. Inquisitor, like the, I think they like find like the cash or whatever. Yes. Um. Yeah, they find like a food store. Um. They they, they find like this like they they like oh yeah there's a place that the church was or whatever and the steel ministry had and they go into it and they open up this like secret passageway and yep. there's like you know these like food stores and stuff as well as like a tablet that like has writing on it and they're also talking about like the Inquisitor and, like. You know, I, I don't remember all the exact details of when all these things happened, but the, like the Inquisitor had like extra spikes in it. It had a pewter spike yep. through its heart. Yep. And it also had like another spike that it was trying to like stab Ellen with. with. Yeah. So like these Inquisitors have more going on with them. Yeah. Um. They they've got more spikes than the previous ones yep. did. And and I wrote them all down. It's two through the eyes, one through the shoulders that are steel. Uh. Two steel, four bronze in the ribs. Excuse me. A bronze one through the heart, and then also had one that I was trying to stab Alan with. Um, yeah, uh, which was steel. Which was steel. So, don't know what's up with that. And then I have the note. Several sooler, soolers? <laughs> Several soothers at once can control Coloss. Yes. And that's something that was, like, on the tablet. That was, like... The Coloss can be controlled. If you get several soothers all pushing on them at once, this is intentional. Um, uh, and so it's like, you know, before it'd been like, oh, you know, Mistborn can can do it. Yep. Um, and Breeze like tried pushing on them and nothing happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's like, you know, it'd been like this thing like, oh, could like Mistborn do it? And it's like, okay, well, actually, if you got enough soothers. Yes. Doing it all at once, and yeah, they could. Yeah, because Vin can do it with, uh, with the Duralumin right. or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's like you need like the big, but yeah, big push of it. And so if you get like several soothers all doing it at once, they yeah. can control a coloss. And this is like something that gets up behind. So I feel like that's maybe gonna come up at some point. You know, they're gonna get multiple soothers or whatever to control some coloss. Um. Yeah. Uh. Found a food store hidden by the church, secret alamancy info, and all the supply depots. So they've been finding these places yeah. around the Empire, and they have food and info about alamancy and all that sort of stuff. And this one, they're like, here's what Electrum does. And it's like, well, we already knew that. <laughs> yeah. But the last depot is in Set's home. So maybe that's where the ATM's hidden. There's like one last food cache over in set city whose name escapes me uh and so it's like we gotta go to set's place because he's been wanting to go back and reconquer that place for a while yeah you need to go back there 
and try and find it. Hopefully, that's where the ATM stash is. That's where the the ATM store is that we've been looking for uh, since forever. That was the goal of book one. Yep. <laughs> to get that ATM. You get the ATM, and, and they're still looking for it. Still looking for it. It's going to be fucking era two of Mistborn. We're still going to be <laughs> looking for that goddamn ATM. Um, uh, and... Vin's very much like it's it's there, and yeah. Alan's like, well, we don't know that it's there. No, it's it's definitely for sure there. Um, be careful what you speak; only your thoughts are safe. Yep. Oh no. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So Vin is like, because she's thinking like, you know, only your thoughts are safe, and so she has like some stuff that she wants to like talk about, but she's like, I can't because it could know. Yeah. Because only your thoughts are safe and things... Well, because it's not even a... It's like it can't affect things that are metal, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't know. It's like it knows everything, seemingly. It's like if it, it can watch us and, like, see what we're doing. So, like, it could maybe still, like, read the metal slabs. It just can't change them. But I don't know if that's true or not. But, yeah, so it's like... Oh no, more reason for Vin to not share to her not, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. thoughts. We found another reason for Vin to not actually open up to people for this book. <laughs> this time, there's a mystical reason why Vin can't open up to people. It's because only your thoughts are safe. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> we just gotta feed Vin's paranoia some more. But that's the last thing that I have for um, for chapter five. Um, I, I like some of the... Like just interactions between Ellen and uh, Fatrin, mm-hmm. like the leader of this like uh, yeah, town yeah. and stuff. Of a titan. Yeah, there's uh, because like when they go to get the cash or whatever, they're mm-hmm. like uh, um, they're like, oh yeah, we're they're they're just going in here, and he's like, this place belongs to my people, my people, Fatrin. Uh, Ellen says, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the city is mine now, as are its, its contents. <laughs> mm-hmm. You came to rob us, Fatrin accused, just like the bandits who tried to take the city last year. No, Ellen said, I came to conquer you. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just uh. Hmm. See, I remember that this place is the Titan because in the audiobook it keeps sounding like he's saying the Titan. The Titan. Yeah, from the Titan. It's like, yeah. oh, it's the town is the Titan. Yeah. Yeah. And then Ellen d- tries to convince him more uh, mm-hmm. uh, normally. It's right. It's like, uh, I want you to think carefully about what you're arguing for. What would happen if I did leave you? With this much food, with this much wealth down here, can you trust your people not to break in, your soldiers not to try selling this to other cities? Just, like, going on about all of yeah, that. Yeah, it's like, it kind of makes you a target, yep. having it. Yeah. But it's also, like, it's, like, also all of your people should come with us to, yep. like, to, to, to Luthadel, Luthadel, because... Yep. That's where it's safe. Yeah. From like the the ever encroaching mist and whatnot. Yeah. So it's don't like, fight this. You've struggled well, but it's time to have allies. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. It's I like, won't lie to you. I'm gonna take the contents of this cavern, whether you resist me or not. <laughs> right. But I also give you my protection. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He's very Emperor Ellen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Is that all for for chapter five? Um, yeah. Alrighty. Chapter six. Uh, another sad Marsh chapter. I have always terrorists to make Inquisitors question mark. This is the chapter where that happens. New Spike's old Inquisitors were incomplete, in quotes. So it's just... Where is it? Can I see? Yeah, I found it now. Oh, you were just looking for chapter six? Yep. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <sighs> Marsh's brethren had the normal spikes in their heads driven into the skull, yet he could also see telltale signs of the new spikes jutting from their chests and backs. Marsh had placed many of them, killing the terrorists that had either been captured in the north or tracked down across the land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like... The new t- spikes seem to be mm-hmm. made from terrorists. Yes, and and so that's and so that's the the thing that I was talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's specifically he says terrorists and like the ones we got from the north and the ones we've tracked down. Yeah. So it's like it's not yeah, just yeah, yeah. any random person that we've come across that we're like using to do right. this. Specifically, yeah. Specifically, he's like the terrorists that we've captured from the north and that we've like tracked down and stuff. So it seems like 
you know, I hadn't necessarily put it with, like, the fact that it's, like, these new spikes, so that's where they're coming from. Yeah. But just sort of, like, you know, in general, doing the whole Inquisitor thing. Um, but, yeah, so it's, like, these new Inquisitors have more spikes. Yeah. And something to do with the terror. So, like, yeah, it's I, I wonder if, like, they're trying to give themselves... Ferrochemi. Ferrochemi. God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I just want to say heme allergy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but they're using heme, heme allergy, allergy to yeah, get yeah. the thing. And I just... Argh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> My brain is not working today. Um, but yeah. And new spikes on Inquisitors were incomplete. He was like... I felt they were like incomplete somehow before, before this. And then these new spikes are completing them in some way. Um, and that's all I have for... Chapter 6, because it was another short, sad Marsh chapter. Yeah. Yeah, he's just uh, a little bit more of... Uh, he's thinking about uh, Ruin couldn't read his thoughts. Uh, right. That he was fairly confident, just like... Right, just like you were talking about in the previous chapter. It's like only your thoughts are yeah, safe and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, And... Because isn't he also like... He wishes he would go mad. Yes. So then he wouldn't have to worry about it. Right, it's like, I wish that Ruin would just kind of control me all the time, and that I could just, like, stop having these moments of, like, being Marsh. Yeah. That I could just be that, like, other... Just be sort of the Inquisitor, and just sort of... Because when I'm the Inquisitor, and being controlled by Ruin, I'm happy with all the stuff that's going on, right? Yeah. It's like a duh. Yeah. And so it's like, I'd rather just stay, stay there yeah, yeah, yeah. than, like, sort of coming back to reality and all the horrible things that I'm doing and all this sort of stuff, you know? Yeah. I'd rather... I'd, Rather just go mad completely, as it yeah. were. And he also thinks about uh, how the Inquisitors before were, like, incomplete. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah I, was, I was saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the Lord Ruler withheld some stuff. Right, right, right. Um, right, because if it did allow them to get Farrakami from the Terrace people then that would make them be able to do the things do that things he could do. Yeah, right, which, which that's what he was, like, most afraid of, basically, so... Yep, so it makes sense that he would, like... Other than ruin, probably. <laughs> right, 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 yeah, so it makes sense that he'd try and keep that from them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That all for, for chapter six? Yeah. All right. Chapter seven. Ten soon, again. Yeah. More ten soon. More the, ten soon. Ten soon chapters in this section have been some of my favorite. Yep. Um, and so we get Tensoon gets bones. Yep. They give him some bones. Yeah, it's the first line of the chapter. They gave him bones. Yep. And he forms a rough approximation of a human. Yep. Uh, the, the person, the, the other con just like, oh, I, you know. That, that must be, uh, like, what a coincidence. We must have given you, like, your previous bones, like, or, mm -hmm. or one you've already one had. One you've already had before because he made such a good, yeah. like, approximation of, of the person. Yeah. And he's like, I'd never used these bones before yep. in, in his head or whatever. Um, knows most chondra up through the sixth gen or so. Yeah. Um, true body. True body, so fucking cool. Yeah, I love the whole true body thing with the chondra, where it's like these the bones that they use, where yep. it's like artificial bones made of like gems, gems or, or crystal or wood or metal yep. or just like all this sort of stuff. It's in like being clear so yep. that you can see the bones and stuff. It's so cool. <laughs> it's just like. Such a cool concept. I I love the chondra. For for like the chondra to have. Yeah. It's like what does a chondra society look like? Yeah. So like having the bones, and I'm like, it's like, but but they're still like humanoid. Yes. They're they're like humanoid bones, but made out of like crystal or stone or yep. wood or you know metal or whatever. Um, which is like, huh? Um, and <laughs> and he's like, I made myself opaque. Yes. Which is like, just without thinking, I made myself opaque, yeah. and they're all, like, clear, and it's like, oh, it's sort of the, the difference between yeah, like him been and them in, uh, in it, human society yeah. for so long. Uh, human bones. An insult of sorts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to give him human bones, um, as opposed to... You to know, a true a, body. A, tr a true body. Um, fifth gen, 200 years younger. Mm -hmm. He's of the third gen. A blessing of potency, question mark? Yes. Um, uh, Tensoon saw two sparkling rods of metal embedded in the clear muscles of each fifth shoulders. All three had the blessing of potency. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I, and I and I don't know what that means. The blessing of potency. What does that do? What does that do for you? <laughs> and what do those metal rods have to do with it? Huh? Um, ten soon politics is my note. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because like talking about like the second generation, like oh they're never out in the world, like yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't they don't know what's going on. The fifth, right. like the fifth generation and like some younger are like mm-hmm. a lot more like. Mm-hmm. Uh, liable for change and stuff. Right, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because it's interesting because there's, like, there's, like, the first generation and then the second generation. Yes. And he's part of the third generation. Yeah. And and I think they sort of get a bit more into um, their sort of, like, relationships in, like, a later chapter. Yeah. But it's just interesting because you just keep hearing, like, the generations and, like, what does that mean? The first generation, the second generation, the third generation, like the fact that they're so strongly delineated yes you know it's not like because for us generations like in a family you can point to distinct generations you know in terms of like but in terms of like a broader like even how we have like oh gen z yeah gen x yeah you know those are very like they're kind of nebulous like there's there's mm mm-hmm wiggle room there's places there's, where it's like oh like you could be gen gen z or are you a millennial or are you right like, you know it's like it's all just kind of socially defined yeah. and adam conover has this great like talk that he gave where it's like the only like it's all just a bunch of people <laughs> it's just like yeah. there's some yeah, people yeah, yeah, and there's yeah. some other people it's like you can see like a notable bump in the population that is the baby boom yeah but like that's so like, that is a statistical statistically notable thing is this jump this population bump from the baby boom and that's why you get the term baby boomers yes but like the generations as we know them like ah yes and then this year magically the people who were born before it were this and born after it were that you know it's all very nebulous and socially defined and you can try and like come up with things like depending on where you draw the line of gen z and millennial yep oh yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm on one side Same. or the other you know and so it's like yeah, but with these it's like no yeah there's the first generation yep. and the second generation and the third, third generation, generation. yeah and considering the conjure were like made yep it makes sense that they'd be like here is the first yep. generation <laughs> <laughs> but then it seems like each time more are made it's like and then here's the next batch yep. and the next batch yeah, 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 yeah. it's super interesting um we're on the eleventh generation. Oh, also, um, Ten Soon, he's not given any clothes, and he gets rid of his genitals. Yes. Yep. Um, as is the style. Yep. <laughs> with the with the Chandra, which is interesting. Yep. I also love like them talking about like uh, that the the fifth generation had had time to commission bodies and stuff because mm-hmm. uh, they didn't leave the homeland yeah. and stuff like that. Right, right, right. and um. As, yes, I had. That's what I was thinking. Why y'all look like humans? <laughs> so yeah. he has a whole thing. It's like you know, you you have this whole disdain for humans or whatever, but you still in in your true bodies sort of mimic yep. the appearance yeah, of humans. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, what's up with that? And it's like I, I like that Ten Soon makes sort of like a, a comment on it in in universe. Um, and then also... Yeah, it's ironic, but when we wear the true bodies, we wear them in the form of humans. Two arms, two legs, faces formed after the fashion of humankind. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Sometimes I'm... you wondered if the unbirthed, the creatures that the humans called mistrates were more honest than their brothers the Chandra. That was literally the thing that I was trying to say was unbirthed. <laughs> got you. Um, but you, but you got, you got, I mean, the... <laughs> I can't, I can't, can't speak. Yeah. Partially I can't speak because I'm focusing so much on trying not to... You're, yeah. Because, like, my nose is giving me trouble. Yeah. And so I'm trying not to sound too nasal. Um, but yes, that, that was my last note was the unbirthed, which I yeah. thought was interesting. Like, how do the mistwraiths become Chandra? Yeah. You know? What's up with that? Yeah, he, he thinks at one point, like, I've been away so long. The 11th generation must have been chosen by now. I still don't know most of the 8th, let alone the 9th or 10th. Yeah, it, it almost feels like, the way I imagine it is, there's just a mistwraith. Just a big old mistwraith glooping around. Yeah. And then the conjure go up to it and just like, boop turn it into the next generation of Chandra. Got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? It just sort of like... Blah, blah, blah. It just sort of becomes a bunch of, a bunch of yeah, Chandra, yeah. and 
that they're are by giving it one of these like blessings or yeah. whatever is my guess as to how that would happen. It's like we need more Chandra. Turn this mistrath into Chandra because yeah. it's like the the eleventh generation is chosen, chosen. Yeah, by yeah. now. So it's like either we go out and we grab a bunch of mistraths and awaken them, yeah. or we take one, one and, and yeah, 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 turn it into a bunch of them. But yeah, so I, I don't know. But yeah, that's that's all I've got for chapter seven. Yeah. Alrighty. All right, so we're going to go ahead and say that this is episode one. Yeah. And that we're going to do part one, even though we read all part one, we're going to yeah. do it in two parts, just because we're already, as you'll have noticed... <laughs> a little late. A little late. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll come at you with part two of part, part one. Yeah, right, right, right. right. <laughs> uh, the next time, because we're already, like, you know, over like an hour and a half and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's a, there was a bit to talk about, and we'll, yeah. we'll still have quite a bit for the next part. So. Yeah, there's quite a lot here in part one. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, feel free to do all the YouTube things, commenting especially. Yeah. We love to see it. Always love it. And y'all really liked the last two videos yeah. of All of Ascension. Yeah. Got way more views yeah. than the previous ones, probably because so much happens yes. there at the end of yeah, those books. Yeah. People are, you know, wanting to see. Uh, but yeah, uh, this has been Let's Talk About Book. Let's Talk About Book. And now you can go forth and think about book on your own time. Uh, this has been Smivka. And Strawberry. Have a lovely whenever. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.